Allow me to ask you a question. Let's say you work in a manufacturing. Do you think extra light in the factory would make you more productive? What about less light throughout the factory? Do you believe you'd be more productive if you worked more hours a day or fewer hours? How about longer or shorter breaks? How do you believe this will affect your efficiency? These are some of the questions researchers posed to themselves in the 1920s. They undertook a study to determine whether or not workers in an electric workplace would be more productive under specific conditions, and the results were unexpected. No matter how they changed the working circumstances, the employees were always more productive. This phenomenon became known as the Hawthorne effect, after the Hawthorne Works Electric Factory where the research was carried out. This video discusses the Hawthorne effect, its history, and examples of its application in everyday life, including how you might utilize it to improve your own efficiency. Hey everyone, it's Noel, your gateway to understanding human behavior and emotions. Join us for fascinating insights. Hit subscribe for a part of our journey through the exciting field of psychology. So what is the Hawthorne effect? The Hawthorne effect, also known as the observer expectancy effect, holds that when people are aware that they are being observed, they change or adjust their behavior. Observation may be a separate variable that researchers must consider while designing or carrying out a study. This becomes an issue when conducting experiments since it might be difficult to present a test without making participants feel as if they are being observed. And the Hawthorne effect affects more than simply the individuals. Researchers believe that the Hawthorne effect may cause the researchers to bias the data or interpret them erroneously. So why is this happening? The responses may vary depending on the study setting. Take productivity studies as an example. As part of the Hawthorne investigations, the workers may have received feedback on their productivity. That extra observation and feedback could contribute to higher productivity. For example, I know I work more harder when I am aware that I am being observed. Another cause is the demand impact. The participants may have wished to satisfy the experimenters by producing the outcomes they expected. This entails working harder even when variables such as working hours or lighting have altered in ways that could contradict the original theory. Another answer could be found in the individual's initial reasons for participating in the study. Throughout the Hawthorne investigations, participants began to question the researchers' objectives. They were concerned that the study might lead to layoffs, which could have a negative impact on motivation. One final cause of the Hawthorne effect is a study involving people and a horse. If the experimenters or viewers are aware of the study's desired outcome, they may unintentionally distort the findings. So in the early 1900s, William von Holsten claimed that his horse, Clever Hans, could solve arithmetic problems. A German psychologist was astounded by this and proceeded to investigate the horse to check if the owner was a scam. And while fraud was not involved, the psychologist did see something odd. If the owner was present or knew the answers to the arithmetic problems, the horse responded correctly 89% of the time. However, if the owner was not present or did not know the answer, the horse only responded correctly 6% of the time. Further research on the Clever Hans effect demonstrates that drug-sniffing dogs and humans are more likely to generate a certain result if the experimenters, owners, or observers in the room are aware of the desired outcome. Many replication experiments have been conducted to prove or disprove the occurrence of the Hawthorne effect, but not all of them have verified its reality, particularly to the extent indicated in the original Hawthorne research. However, other studies support the Hawthorne effect and how it may affect the outcomes of various research projects. For example, number one is a study from the American College of Rheumatology that found that the Hawthorne effect may have influenced the rheumatoid arthritis study's outcomes. Researchers assessed the individual's symptoms before, during, and after the trial, and regardless of whether variables were included in the study, the patient's conditions improved. After the trial ended, the conditions deteriorated. This demonstrates that, while the Hawthorne effect has been used in productivity and human behavior studies, it can also have an impact on medical research results. 
The second example is patients with cerebral palsy. So contradictory evidence can demonstrate the Hawthorne effect in action. In the 1970s, a study was conducted to determine whether a treatment may lessen motor dysfunction in cerebral palsy patients. The researchers collected patient testimony on the treatment's outcome, as well as quantitative data from several tests administered to them. It came out that the qualitative and quantitative statistics contradicted each other. The patient claimed that the treatment worked for them, but the results indicated otherwise. This could lend credence to the notion that incentives, the demand effect, and something known as the compliance bias all have an impact on study results. Finally, consider the case of clinical studies. So when patients are selected for a clinical study, they may be banned from leaving the hospital or research institution where the test is being conducted. Some studies believe that the trial effect, as well as the Hawthorne effect, occur here. In addition to the changes and behaviors generated by observers, subjects may be influenced by the degree of care provided in the facility. Furthermore, they may be more inclined to follow the researcher's instructions, which may influence the results. For example, if you're investigating if orange juice lowers cortisol levels, it could be the luxurious therapeutic resort itself, not the orange juice, if you think of it as a holiday. So in order to further investigate human behavior, researchers frequently require human trials. Now the Hawthorne effect serves as a reminder that humans are difficult to work with and assess. How can researchers keep individuals from providing the responses they wish to hear? Or how could they design a study to best mimic a typical environment, including housing and working conditions? How can all of this be done ethically? These are crucial questions, and the solution isn't yet clear. However, the more you learn about psychology and study design, the easier it will be to challenge conclusions and seek the truth. Thank you very much for viewing this video. I hope you learned more about the Hawthorne Effect. As we conclude, I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found value in this video and learned something new, and I look forward to seeing you in our future videos. I would deeply value it if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel. Your support will help us to create more valuable content. What are the key takeaways from this video that you can share in the comment section?